الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أطعمنا وسقانا وكفانا وآوانا وجعلنا بفضله المسلمين أحمده سبحانه وأشكره على نعمه وآلائه وقد تأذن بالزيادة للشاكرين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له رب العالمين وأشهد أن نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله إمام المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك ونعم وأنعم على عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فاتقوا الله أيها المسلمون فاتقوا الله تعالى وأطيئوه وراقبوه فلا تعسوه واشكروه ولا تكفروه فإن الموعد قريب وإن الحساب عسير وإن الجزاء خلد في النعيم وإن الجزاء خلد في النعيم أو في أسفل السافلين My brothers and sisters on the authority of Nikdam Ma'di Karib رضي الله عنه the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ma mala adami wa ya'an sharrin min batn the son of Adam doesn't fill a container worse than his stomach bi hasab ibn Adam it is sufficient for us humans uqulatun yuqimna sulbah it is enough for him to eat which will that will give him strength to his body the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that which will keep his body upright but if he feels that he needs to eat more for then he should eat his fill to a third of his stomach and he should leave a third for his drink and a third for air to breathe Sheikh Muhammad al-Mubarakuri he said the messenger of Allah in his hadith describes the stomach as a container in the first part of the hadith he describes it as a container and a container is something which is used to transport something something which you take from one place to another not something that you need to fill all the time but look next in the next part of the hadith the shaykh is saying the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then described it ثم جعله شر الأوئيه he described it as something bad and it is a bad container. This is because often when people eat, they don't carry goodness in it. Most people eat to fulfill their desires and their only concern becomes the life of this dunya and this desire, whatever they eat, and they carry in their body that which will be harmful for them. Therefore he goes on to say, Yufdi il fasad fi deen wa dunya. When you fill up your stomach, it will corrupt your deen it will corrupt your dunya for yakunu sharrun minha so that way the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has described it as being something bad because it corrupts a person's religion and it corrupts a person's health in the dunya my brothers and sisters as we prepare for our guest to arrive ramadan we have to realize that food the amount we eat and the things that we eat is connected to our iman our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated fasting because it is connected with growth, physical growth, but it is also connected to your Iman. One of the ulama, the Salaf, Al Hussein ibn Abdul Rahman, rahimahullah, he said, Kathratu ta'am, eating a lot to meet al qalb, is a means for your heart to die. And what he means here is not a physical death, he's not talking about heart attacks or any other kind of disease. He is saying that when you eat too much, it has an impact on your Iman. It makes you lazy and the likelihood of doing good deeds goes down. That means your Iman decreases. Imagine my brothers and sisters as if there was no Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never legislated for his Ramadan. Imagine if Ramadan never existed. All year round you can eat what you want, you can do what you want, you can drink what you want, wherever you are you can do what you want without any restraint. Would you ever account yourself would you ever hold back? Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to stop eating and drinking because there is a benefit to your iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyu alladheena aman, believers, qutiba alaykum as-siyam, siyam has been made wajib upon you. 
كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم just like it was made wajib on the ummas that came before us لعلكم تتقون so that you may attain taqwa withhold from eating and drinking so that you may attain taqwa Ibn Kathir in the tafsir he said الصوم fasting فيه تزكية بالبدن it cleanses your body it's good for your body but that's not the only benefit وتضييك المسالك الشيطان and also it closes the paths of shaitan who runs through your body. Therefore, fasting has a spiritual benefit. My brothers and sisters, if you never accounted yourself, if Ramadan did not exist so that you can attain taqwa, when would you attain taqwa? Wahhab ibn Munabbih, one of the ulama of the Salaf, he met another one from the ulama of the Salaf, Ata al Khurasani. And he said, In kunta yugnik ma yikfik. If you need something, then take how much you need, not how much you want. If you need to eat, if you need to drink, if you need anything from the dunya, take how much you need, not how much you want. Because surely, you don't need a lot from the dunya. Only a little bit of the dunya will suffice what you need. But... If you take what you want, not what you need, then there will be nothing in the dunya that will feed your greed. You will become an extremely greedy person and you will never be satisfied. Walillah, alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Ramadan so that we can work our iman and we can take little from the dunya and we can take much from the akhirah. Another one from the ulama of the salaf, Amr bin Qais, he said, Be careful of your stomach. Be careful of your stomach. Because if you give your stomach everything it wants, it will harden your heart. Meaning, when you hear goodness, when you see goodness, you will never be able to benefit from it. And because your stomach is consuming everything it wants, then you become a greedy person. And you will not accept the truth because you become a person that follows his desires. Another one from the ulama the Salaf, Salama ibn Sa'id, he said, إن كان, إن كان الرجل ليعير بالبتنة كما يعير بالذم يعمله If only a person was eager over his sins, as if he was eager over his food, then surely that person will be successful. Every single one of us need to eat good things, want to eat good things, we want things that are going to make us happy. He is saying here, Salama, if we were having that kind of protective jealousy over our Iman that we have with our relationship with food, then surely you will be successful. My brothers and sisters, the first thing that man was tested with was with food. Adam salam was told, don't approach that tree and eat from it. And this remains a test for us until Yawm Qiyamah, the sons of Adam. Iman is connected to the things that you eat and you intake into your body. If you control it, it won't be your master. But if you can't control it, you will never have a master of everything. You will never be able to master anything because you will be a person that will then only be satisfied by his desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhur rusul, messengers, qulu min tayyibat, eat from those which are good. And it is connected to your ability to do good deeds. Inni bima ta'maluna alim. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Aqooli qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li jamil muslimin. Fa astaghfiru. Innahu huwa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ala ihsanih. والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا نبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأعوانه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد my brothers and sisters there is no doubt that our wants and our needs our food and our drink our possessions and our dunya affects our iman and if our Iman is affected, then this could be something which is positive or it could be something which is negative. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us Sawm 
so that we will have a positive connection to the things that we possess, to the things that we eat and drink, so that we will be successful in the dunya and in the akhirah. One of the ulama, the salaf, Abu Imran al Jawni, he said, Man ahabba an yunawir qalba, anyone who wants to have nur enter into his heart, meaning anyone who wants to become good from inside, fal yuqil tu'ma, then that person should reduce the amount of food that he eats. Abu Sulaiman al Darrani, he said, Rahimullah, inna al nafs, ida ja'ad wa atishat, surely a soul, if it experiences hunger, and he experiences thirst, suffer qalb wa then surely that heart becomes pure and it becomes cleansed and it becomes soft. A merciful and a kinder version of yourself in the relationship that you have towards food and drink. Then he went on to say, Rahimahullah, Miftah dunya is shiba. The keys to the life of this dunya is that you can eat what you want and you can drink what you want and you can take from the dunya what you want. This makes a person connected to the life of this dunya. And the keys for the akhirah is that you taste hunger. My brothers and sisters, by fasting, we have a chance to become better. But how do we become better? Ramadan is an opportunity for us all to learn our religion. Not that we sleep around all day and then we become lazy because we are not eating and drinking. Fasting and preventing ourselves from food and drink actually opens up the body and the soul and the mind to benefit from information that it receives. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah in talking about the hadith that we quoted, a third for your food and a third for your drink and a third for air, he said rahimahullah, وَدَعْ ثُرُثَ بِبَطْنِكَ يَتَنَفَّسِ Leave a third for on your stomach for breath, for air, لِتَتَفَكَّر That emptiness in your stomach will allow you to ponder and it will allow you to benefit it will allow you to absorb wisdom hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated fasting because whilst you are fasting you are not connecting yourself to the life of this dunya whilst you are fasting you have the ability to increase in becoming of those people who have nur in their heart and Allah Hassan al-Basri is saying here whilst you are fasting you are able to benefit from ilm and recitation of the Qur'an and anything which is of information which will benefit your soul this is because when you refrain from eat and drink it enables the soul to absorb it my brothers and sisters Allah has stopped us from eating and drinking during this month not because he wants hardship for ourselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to control ourselves and if you do this for the sake of Allah you will surely become blessed how many times do you do something because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has legislated it and you don't really want to do it but when you do it you find the khair and the barakah and the goodness in it likewise so my brothers and sisters when you stop eating and drinking something which is beloved to us when you stop eating and drinking when you reduce the amount you eat and drink it has a positive impact on you on your iman in your connection with Allah and it enables a person to have nur enter into his life and in his actions and it makes of those people who then become learned and benefit from knowledge when it reaches them. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina afdul man salla wa sam Allahumma salli ala ala alihi wa ashabihi al barr al kiram Allahumma salli wa sallam wa zil wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma aiz al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma aiz al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa dhammir a'da al-deen ya rabbal alameen Allahumma ya hayu ya qayyum برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شؤوننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا ترفة عين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فأفو أنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فأفو أنا اللهم بلغنا رمضان ونحن على خير يا رب العالمين اللهم تحن قلوبنا من النفاق وأمالنا من الرياء وأنسنتنا من الكذب وعيننا من الخيانة اللهم تقبل توبتنا واغسل حوبتنا واجب دعوتنا وثبت حجتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم فرج هم المؤمنين من المسلمين اللهم فرج هم المحمومين من المسلمين ونفذ كرم المكروبين واقض الدين على المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين يا رب العالمين
العالمين ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك أنت غفور رحيم وإنك على كل شيء قدير ربنا جل مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتنا ربنا وتقبل دعاء يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إباد الله أذكر الله يذكركم وأشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون